Bob Saget, a comedy icon. Robert Lane, Bob Saget, was a well-known, edgy, and in-your-face stand-up comedian, television host, and actor. It was ultimately his lead role in the American sitcom Full House, where he played the role of a widowed father with three young girls, which fetched him the kind of success he deserved. He quickly became America's dad, this being his first big role, gaining wide popularity and thousands of fans. Fans who loved Bob Saget's family-friendly humor on Full House and America's Funniest Home Videos were often surprised to find that his stand-up comedy was quite the opposite. On stage, Saget reveled in dirty jokes and vulgar words that would never find their way onto Full House. Throughout the years, Saget remained a fixture in stand-up comedy, releasing multiple specials over the years and taking his show on the road. You know, he just has that thing about him. He's super neurotic and super, you know... Super sweet. But he, but he also is just like the most, yeah, the most real person that you, you, you'll know. I have known Bob since I was 18 years old, and uh, we started as stand-ups together, and there's a lot of history there. And uh, he's a brother. As well as being widely celebrated in the world of comedy, Bob Saget also used his fame and paychecks to support several charities, highlighting issues such as the Starlight Children's Foundation and the Scleroderma Research Foundation. It's so close to my heart. I lost my sister to scleroderma. I lost my, one of my best friends, Sharon Monsky, who was the founder of the Scleroderma Research Foundation. I've been involved for 25 years. Um, I made a television movie about it. I tried to help and then We've raised over $40 million in 25 years, and um, the more people I meet, the more patients I meet, the more it's more meaningful. Bob is one of the most genuine people you will ever meet, and he has the biggest heart you will ever know. You can think whatever you want about his stand-up comedy, but if you know the real Bob, he will be there for you in a heartbeat. He will do anything for anyone, and he exudes so much love that you can't not want to return that to him and do that for him and be there. He's just the best. With a four-decade-long career, Bob Saget has left a large imprint on the world of comedy and will continue to be celebrated by his fans and those who knew him best. Bob Saget was born in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania on May 17, 1956 to a Jewish family. His father, Benjamin, was a supermarket executive, and his mother, Rosalind Dolly, was a hospital administrator. His comic skills emerged at an early age, winning kisses from girls in kindergarten for making them laugh. Around the age of nine, Saget started making movies with a Super 8 camera. Initially, Saget wanted to go into medicine, but his grades were lackluster and got even worse when the family moved from Philadelphia to Encino, California when he was a teenager. He returned to Philadelphia for his senior year of high school. His honors English teacher saw his creative potential and urged him to seek a career in films. At Temple University, Saget pursued his love of film. He made a short documentary through Adam's Eyes about a boy who undergoes surgery to correct a genetic defect. The film was well received and earned Saget a Student Academy Award in 1978. Saget intended to take graduate courses at the University of Southern California, but quit after only a few days. 
Saget described himself at that time in an article by Glenn Esterly in the 1990 Saturday Evening Post. I was a cocky, overweight 22-year-old. Then I had a gangrenous appendix taken out, almost died, and I got over being cocky or overweight. Staying in Los Angeles, Saget started channeling his natural comic talents into a stand-up routine. He spent years on the comic club circuit, developing an act based on free association and his own unique commentary. All, all the comedians that I've had the fortune of, my dad, my dad has uh, influenced me a lot. Com Comedy-wise, would be Richard Pryor, who I got to work with, um, and uh, Rodney Dangerfield, and, and Billy. And everybody that I watched coming up, uh, when I was at the comedy store on the Improv, when I started, it was David Letterman and Jay Leno and Gary Shandling and all these guys that I would just love watching. Along the way, Saget befriended fellow comedians Gary Shandling and Dave Coulier. He was driven to succeed, once describing himself as a triple-A personality. Still, Saget did manage to have a personal life, marrying attorney Sherry Kramer in 1983. The couple had dated since high school. Following a short stint as a member of CBS's The Morning Program in early 1987. After six months, Saget was let go from The Morning Program. His next project would prove to be his greatest success. As Danny Tanner, a widowed father of three on Full House, Saget played one of television's most famous dads. The premise of the show was that his brother-in-law, Jesse, played by John Stamos, and his friend Joey, played by Dave Coulier, move in with his family. His eldest daughter, DJ, was played by Candace Cameron Bure. Jody Sweeten played middle child Stephanie, and the role of baby Michelle Tanner was shared by twins Mary Kate and Ashley Olsen. While critics weren't thrilled with the show, audiences loved it. The series reached the top 20 soon after it premiered in the fall of 1987. With cute kids and a lot of domestic humor, it was a natural fit for the network's Friday night lineup of family entertainment. Rusty! <laughs> that kid is bad news. Michelle, did Rusty do that to your eye? With his kaleidoscope. That doesn't sound like little Rusty. Dad, wake up. He's the devil boy. <laughs> I, I can't believe he did this. Danny, just uh, out of curiosity, was uh, a little rusty in the bathroom before you took a shower? Yeah, why do you ask? Rusty! Throughout his time on Full House, Saget built a strong relationship with co-star John Stamos. Their friendship was maintained throughout their changing lives, with Saget even making a speech when John Stamos received a star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame in 2009. This, this man um, right here is um, a brother of mine. And, you know, I was, I was talking uh, with Gary Marshall before I came up here. And in your life, when you get to work with someone, uh, in your life when that work ends, whatever it may be, you don't often see them as much. And um, John has truly become my family. Uh, his family is my family, his mom, his sisters. Um, Candace and Lori are here. Um, our work family meant a great deal to us and you are uh, you've always been there for me in ways that I can't even describe but I will I'm gonna take 40 minutes to describe it um <laughs> no I will just say that I actually hurt my knee and I love to whine about it because I am Jewish and whining is redundant for what I do um quiet's down here but what happened is I was uh, at Bye Bye Birdie seeing your remarkable performance and this man if you don't know what happened uh, they had a, a technical malfunction and this man is a true hero and he always has been and he walked out and he took held court and he took care of everybody in the house 
and they had me come up on stage and like a fool because I'm a 53 year old year old centaur Tommy Toon wannabe I jumped from here to about here and I snapped I popped a bone in my knee and and John we've known each other a long time and this is not the first bone that I have popped with you that's it now it's all love that was it I just worked that right in there you are you are memorialized in front of DSW shoes I am going to be here to get special shoes now for my new knee problem. Uh, John, you said this to me once at a public forum thing where you were getting my back and supporting me, and I know for a fact, and you know it, because of how we particularly believe in our lives, that our dads uh, are around somehow, and it, either in our hearts or in our minds, and with the people that love them, you want them to be around, and your dad is no prouder than he could have ever been than he is at this very moment seeing this really amazing thing that is happening for you right here. And you deserve it. You are so talented and so loving. And I will always be there for you and for your family because you are my brother and I love you. In 1989, Saget began as the host of America's Funniest Home Videos, a role he held until 1997. During the early 90s, Saget worked on both Full House and AFV simultaneously. America's Funniest Home Videos was an early reality show of sorts, with viewers sending in their humorous video clips to win a cash prize. As the host, Saget provided the transitions between the clips, as well as his own comical commentary. When I was growing up, I had two older sisters, and they had those bikes without the bar in them, and I got one as a hand-me-down. I didn't mind it, though, because it went great with that hoop skirt I was wearing. <laughs> so because of that experience, I can empathize with people embarrassed on and off their bikes. Hey, Billy said there's a man-eating bush over at the Wilsons. <laughs> the show was an instant ratings hit climbing to the top 10 in a matter of weeks after its January 1990 debut. Saget continued his frenetic pace until Full House was canceled in 1995. After Full House, he was anxious to prove that there was more to him than the G-rated TV dad he had portrayed for so long. Saget returned to stand-up and his edgy, foul mouth material. Saget also took on a project close to his heart, directing the 1996 television movie, For Hope, which starred Dana Delaney as a woman who suffers from scleroderma, an autoimmune disease. Saget's own sister, Gay, had died from the disease in 1994. On television, Saget remained the humorous but mild-mannered host of America's Funniest Home Videos for two more years, signing off in 1997. Saget went through some more changes that year, separating from his wife, Sherry, after nearly 15 years of marriage. The couple had three daughters together. In 1998, he directed his first feature film, Dirty Work, starring Norm MacDonald and Artie Lang. No job is too dirty. Put away! Your wand is magical, Harry. No duty is too low. The critics agree, Dirty Work is crude. Hey, I think he's got his thumb up that dog. <laughs> Vulgar. Shut your cake hole, Yoko! Raunchy. You ever had a chick with a beard? Released one year after he left his long-running role as host of America's Funniest Home Videos, the film received broadly negative reviews from critics and earned low box office returns. However, it has since become a cult favorite due partially to Artie Lang's later popularity on The Howard Stern Show, where the film is sometimes mentioned, often in unflattering terms. Despite his desire to break away from his sitcom past, Saget took the leading role in Raising Dad in 2001. The short-lived comedy series featured Saget as the widowed father of two teenage girls. This time around, however, he played Matt Stewart, a popular English teacher, a hipper, funnier character than Danny Tanner. It received some lukewarm reviews and was canceled after its first season. He served as the voice of the future Ted Mosby, who narrated the CBS sitcom, How I Met Your Mother, which ran for nine seasons from September 19, 2005 to March 2014. Playing into the notion that he was referred to as America's dad, 
Saget voiced an older Ted Mosby, who was sitting down to tell his two children the story of how he met their mother. He was never seen on screen, but at 208 episodes, How I Met Your Mother turned out to be Saget's longest-running TV show. And that was it. In that moment, I wasn't angry anymore. I could see Stella was meant to be with Tony. Kids, you may think your only choices are to swallow your anger or throw it in someone's face. But there's a third option. You can just let it go. And only when you do that is it really gone and you can move forward. And that, kids, was the perfect ending to a perfect love story. It just wasn't mine. Mine was still out there, waiting for me. His HBO comedy special, That Ain't Right, came out on DVD on August 28, 2007. It is dedicated to his father, Ben Saget, who died at age 89 on January 30, 2007, due to complications from congestive heart failure. From 2005 to 2010, Saget had a recurring role in four episodes of the HBO TV series Entourage, playing a parody of himself. He would later appear in the 2015 feature film based on the series. 2005 also saw him be part of Rollin' with Saget, a song by Jamie Kennedy and Stuart Stone about a night out with him that shows off his raunchier behaviors. Saget even does vocals on the track. The video appeared on the MTV series Blowin' Up, and he would come to use it as a pseudo theme song on his stand up tours and websites. Here, let me show him some affection. Then he walked up, wound up, cold clock decked him. Started screaming for that bitch to respect him. Next thing you know, we're in the VIP section. When crew runs deep like this, you wanna brag. Who you it? Rolling with? Man, I'm rolling with Sag. You rolling with Bob? You rolling with Bob Sag? No matter who, no, nobody does it better. You rolling with Bob? You rolling with Bob Sag? The illest motherfucker in a cardigan sweater. Bob Saget had no problem laughing at himself during the Comedy Central roast of Bob Saget. Hosted by John Stamos in 2008, celebrities such as Cloris Leachman, Jeff Ross, Gilbert Gottfried, Greg Giraldo, and Norm MacDonald all took turns taunting Saget. In 2010, Saget starred in an A&E series, Strange Days, in which he followed others in different activities and lifestyles documenting their adventures in unusual ways. But a helmet is a smart thing to wear, am it I is. wrong? It is, I, I, I truly believe that the helmet is a good thing to wear. But you're not because you have a strong cranium. You remember um, the Flintstones? Yeah. You remember Gazoo, the little Martian? Yeah. You yeah. gotta remind me of him with that helmet on. So this, I'm supposed to look Gazoo, geeky. I think that may be a good name for you. I like that. I'm doing seven separate hour kind of documentary comedy episodes where I just show up in a in a world that I become part of, and not in a not in a Borat way, you know. But but I mean it's just me. I joined a motorcycle club and I was in a sidecar from Nashville to Tampa, and I uh, looked for Bigfoot with, with real squatchers with thermal night gear. I redid uh, Hunter Thompson's Fear and, and, and Loathing in Las Vegas, went the Mint 400. Um, I did Nacho Libre wrestling. We did, a, I mean, did an hour doc on it where I'm in the world. So we shoot about 70 hours to make about an hour, and I still don't know why we're doing it. We're crazy, but but I, I love it, and I'm doing a couple entourages this season. I'm doing and I'm doing a tour. Uh, if I can come up with the hour that's worthy of uh, uh, August through January, uh, theater tour. So I'm, I'm, I'm uh, I've got to get funnier. I have not been that funny on this. His 2013 one-hour stand-up special, That's What I'm Talking About, was nominated for a 2014 Grammy Award for Best Comedy Album. The special, filmed at the Moore Theater in Seattle, premiered on Showtime in May 2013. His first book is a New York Times bestseller. Dirty Daddy was released on April 8, 2014 to critical acclaim, with Vanity Fair calling it hilarious and at times heartbreaking. The book is also available as an audiobook Saget recorded himself. He embarked on a small tour in support of the book, including the Pemberton Music Festival, where he introduced Snoop Dogg prior to performing his own set. 
In the same year, he toured Australia for the first time with a stand-up show called Bob Saget Live, The Dirty Daddy Tour. The show was performed in the major cities of Melbourne, Sydney, Brisbane, and Perth. His 2014 stand-up comedy album, That's What I'm Talking About, was nominated for the Grammy Award for Best Comedy Album. In 2015 and 2016, he starred in two episodes of Grandfathered, starring and produced by his Full House co-star, John Stamos. It was also in 2015 that Bob Saget was introduced to Kelly Rizzo through mutual friends. The pair hit it off almost immediately and began dating. After two years, the pair got engaged in 2017. One year later, Bob Saget and Kelly Rizzo tied the knot in a ceremony on the beach in Santa Monica. Bob Saget's newest hour-long stand-up special, Zero to 60, was shot in Brooklyn at the Williamsburg Hall of Music in May 2017. Zero to 60 premiered worldwide on November 14, 2017 on multiple digital platforms, including Amazon Prime and iTunes. From 2016 to 2020, Saget reprised his role as Danny Tanner for 10 episodes of Full House's sequel series, Fuller House, including its series premiere and finale. Well, first thing, I love everybody. Uh, we've always loved each other. We always stayed friends. And the purity of what the, the fans really did tell me and uh, audiences that I went out and performed for the last 20 years, they just love the show. And it had values that shows don't have, you can't watch shows with your kids. This has four demographics. There's levels of brand new children that are watching the old ones to get caught up and now they're, they've watched you know, hours, hundreds of hours <laughs> to get ready for this and on the 26th, they get to boot the whole thing into their head. So it'll be, a, it's very nice to make people so happy. And Netflix doing this, Ted championing championing this uh, is is a huge thing because there's nothing like it. Yeah, and this is a show that never really went away. I mean, it went off in 95, but it's been living in reruns you know, to, to, through today, and people just never, it's been it's just been in the same what, eight year loop, Yeah. Uh, but but it's been nonstop. And not just in the US, all over the world, people love this show. So it's always become a part of multiple generations, multiple countries, I think it's just really a worldwide phenomenon. When I walked on the set, I got emotional because it's 25 years ago. So it was very cool. I mean, the same fabric on the couch they kept in storage. Bob Boyette, <laughs> exec producer, kept it in storage. I, I didn't have brothers, and Bob and Dave are really like brothers to me. And, um, you know, Lori and I are very close. We're, we're all, all of the people you see here are extremely close. We were on a text on the way over here. We just did Jimmy Fallon, and we're texting each other the whole time on the way over here. So. It's a special time for all of us, and I'm, I'm very Dave. proud of it. Okay. Damn, we all still look good. <laughs> hey. Okay, Tommy, Mommy's here. I'm having a tough day, too. I have three boys who count on me for everything. For the first time, we're going to be all on our own. Please, sit down. We're going to have a little talk. You guys did your share for us. I am clearing my schedule, and I'm moving in with my sister. Steph, you need me right now. And you need me. So I'm moving into. Kimmy, you do not need to do this. I agree with DJ, you do not need to do this. Full House is, means as much to us as it does to all the fans. They've been wanting this, asking for it. Uh, we have the best memories, so we're thrilled that we're here today and we get to do this all over again. You know, I don't know what it is that, that sort of made us come together like the family that we have, but it's been amazing and it's been something that's lasted for almost 30 years. And we like deeply, truly love each other like family. And I, I'm so thrilled to get to work with them again. I, I just feel really lucky and really blessed. Well, it's it's just a reversal that you know it's the, it's the three girls raising three boys, and we all we move out of the house and we leave the house to the to them. And and they you know I got to tell you, Candace, Jody, and, and Andrea, they really hold it together. They do such a great job. So proud of them. They're gonna expect the same family loving tones as the original Full House, but there's some new characters. There's a lot of new modern storylines and they can expect uh, the same wonderful full house tones but with a modern twist but it was just great to be back with everybody and and just you know re, you know just experience the laughter and the joy and all the good times that we shared so many years ago and you know it took us like a moment to get back in sync and we were right it felt like we never left well this is my family and uh, we're so close and we've never really parted ways we uh, 
see each other all the time. We really, we really do love each other, which sounds kind of cheesy, but uh, it's such a great group of people, and, and to be able to work together, is a, it's a gift to be able to do this again. It's a lot of the same funny, silly stuff, you know, the same Full House values, so I think fans are going to love it. In 2019, he was announced as host of ABC's Videos After Dark. Saget also hosted the game show Nashville Squares on CMT and was a panelist on To Tell the Truth in an episode with Norman Lear, Rita Moreno, and Joel McHale. In 2020, Saget launched a podcast titled Bob Saget's Here For You with Studio 71. The podcast has over 100 episodes, featuring his one-of-a-kind stream of consciousness storytelling and real and honest conversations with amazing guests, including Tiffany Haddish, Jason Sudeikis, Whoopi Goldberg, and more. I will be there. Bob Saget will be there for you. <laughs> I shouldn't talk in third person. As I was, Bob Saget will be there for you. I'm, I'm a wannabe rapper so bad. But uh, it will have occasional guests, uh, guests that will be meaningful to me and I think, I hope to you. And um, it'll just uh, be me talking to you guys and... I'll be on the phone sometimes, just talking to my agent, complaining about things. But mostly it's to bring you entertainment and to spend some time with you and be real. Throughout his life, Bob Saget was heavily involved with lots of different charities, showing his support for a variety of causes. Through his time on Full House, he got involved with the Starlight Children's Foundation, aiding them with their fundraising. Back when I did the, this show, Full House, uh, they used to bring a lot of kids uh, to the show. And then I, I met some people that I knew through Candace Cameron Bure, um, and I uh, joined the board uh, of uh, Starlight. So that was about 15 years ago or something. So I've been involved with the organization all this time. I've hosted a bunch of their events. I've gone to a ton of their events. I've brought my daughters to these events. So this is a, a close thing to me. Nothing. I do absolutely nothing. I show up and give money when I can. I, whenever I can. I went to a meeting a couple times, and I went to one meeting, and they hadn't seen me for a couple years, and they're like, what are you doing here? I went, I don't know. I saw them. I'm on the board. You know, it's a lot of showbiz. You're, you're name only or honorary, people that can help. And I, I try to help whenever I can. Um, and I love being part of it. I actually went and saw the, um, the, um, the, uh, the Shriner Hospital, which is here in town, which is an amazing facility. It's only got 70 rooms, and they are, they've been able to take kids from all over the country and give them free travel and free medical care. People would, and there's no insurance, there's nothing, and it's all paid for through philanthropic people, and Starlight Starbright hooks that up. Bob Saget was also a champion for scleroderma patients everywhere dating back to 1991 when he first became involved with the Scleroderma Research Foundation, even before his sister Gay lost her battle with the disease. What happened with my sister Gay, we didn't know that she was sick. Um, she was a teacher in the Philadelphia area, and I didn't know what was wrong with her. Um, and they thought it was lupus, they thought it was Epstein-Barr, they thought it was anemia, they thought she was mentally ill. They sent her to a team of doctors. They were, they were, they misdiagnosed her. Um, and then a year later, she came down with just unbearable burning in her, in her extremities, in her hands, and just couldn't do anything. Just, um, and then, I mean, if I had a do-over, I would get different medical treatment for her. And so we went through, and, and, and the TV movie I did about it years ago was, it was very frustrating. And, and now there's, there's no guarantees. I mean, everybody's doing the best they can. So I'm just hurt because what happened to me, I don't want it to happen to other people. So that's kind of what this is about. Um, it happened serendipitously. It was, I met a woman named Sharon Monsky. She founded the Scleroderma Research Foundation. She cold called me and asked me what I hosted. Their first host is Robin Williams. Susan Feniger, who went to school with Sharon Monsky, coerced them into doing their first benefit. He did it. They raised like $150,000. They had one more benefit that I was part of as a comic, and I was unknown. I was just uh, relatively unknown. And I decided to, to uh, do it again, so whenever you need me. She said, will you host next year? I said, sure. I've been involved for 25 years. Um, I made a television movie about it. I tried to help, and then We've raised over $40 million in 25 years, and um, the more people I meet, the more patients I meet, 
the more it's more meaningful um, and we're really making progress. We're actually, there are people that are in whatever you would call remission. Um, I refer people to our centers of excellence. There, are, We have centers that we fund all over the country. Um, Johns Hopkins, Stanford, UCSF, and, and they have thousands of scleroderma patients. So I've been driven for the rest of my life because of what happened to my sister to try to help all the people. And we're gonna have a lot of patients here tonight. And the whole idea is to raise as much money as possible that goes directly to research and um, then test trials with patients that, and then they can work with their rheumatologists in their respective cities. And it's a hard disease and it's also disfiguring in many cases. Some people get it because it means hardening of the skin. And you'll see some of the patients here and some are on oxygen and some are not able to be here and some we've lost. And some are doing amazing. And some come up to me and say, thank you, I'm doing really well. One of our sponsors, Actilion, um, they have come up with brand new drugs that I can't pronounce that are truly helping people. Because there's a lot of things that happen. You, you can die from pulmonary hypertension, which is when your lungs fail. And so that's the ending of, of the life. But my sister was, in three years, she was gone. And she was misdiagnosed. That's one of the biggest problems with the disease. But we're making a lot of progress. And it's thanks to all this. His internationally renowned stand-up comedy, Cool Comedy Hot Cuisine, was a fundraiser to help the charity and became widely popular. Over the years, Cool Comedy Hot Cuisine has raised more than $26 million, all of which was poured into the SRF's research program to drive to a cure for scleroderma. We do four events within two years. We do New York every Christmas Eve time in December. We do Las Vegas now and we do um, San Francisco. So we're really reaching out. We have a, a brand. We know how to do these events. And, um, and we love doing them because we're passionate. And so I'm beyond honored. For more than 30 years, Saget hosted this annual event, traditionally held in New York, Los Angeles, San Francisco, or Las Vegas. Saget joined the board of the SRF in 2003 and served tirelessly throughout his life. Attendees have included generous partners and supporters from around the entertainment world and corporate industries, as well as patients, physicians, and many others who have been directly or indirectly affected by scleroderma. So it's going to be the best five-course meal you can have. It's going to be the best wines you can have. It's going to be the best talent you can have. And we've always had, I mean, you can see behind me, absolutely nothing. But blended in there is Lily Tomlin. That's Jim Gaffigan. Um, that's Robin Williams. That's Jimmy Fallon. That's Whoopi Goldberg. That's George Lopez, who's here tonight. Seth Meyers. Ellen DeGeneres. I mean, John Mayer's done it many times. Jerry Seinfeld. These are people that gave... And I give for them, whatever, they, whatever their cause is. It's an exchange program for caring about things. So this is my patron saint of causes. Since its inception in 1987, Cool Comedy Hot Cuisine became the Scleroderma Research Foundation's signature fundraising event, featuring some of the world's greatest comedians and performing artists. They all donate their time and talents to support SRF's innovative research programs and help raise awareness about this rare autoimmune disease. Well, Bob has been tireless for how many years has he been? 20, 30? I mean, he, he never stops. He never stops talking about this event and his charity. He never stops trying to figure out how to make money, never stops asking his friends to help. And he's like Superman. I mean, you know, Look, if you need anything done, you call Bob. You need a, a, a reservation at a hotel or a flight or something. But if you need something in this arena, you, you call him as well. My friend called me about eight years ago and said, my sister got scleroderma. I don't know what to do. I don't know where to send her. I said, hold on a second. I called him. He whipped off his shirt. There's a big S, you know, painted on his tummy. And he went right into action. And, and this, this, my friend's sister's alive today because of Bob Saget. This one tonight is really important. And I called on friends. And John Stamos, of course, is my bestie. He's doing the auction with me because I want people to not look at me <laughs> and just look at him. And then I have different comedian friends throughout the audience. Mr. Norman Lear is coming here tonight. We have a lot of wonderful people coming. We have great auction items um, that are just beyond. I mean, Taylor Swift donated a guitar. Um, 
uh, many wonderful meals and trips and plays. And it's a very tragic disease. It's a hardening of the skin disease. A lot of people don't know what it is. And then I have friends that call me and say, I just found out I have scleroderma. So it's a pretty common disease. We, we have an 11-year-old boy getting on stage tonight with scleroderma. I have known Bob since I was 18 years old, and uh, we started as stand-ups together, and there's a lot of history there. And uh, he's a brother, you know, he's family, and, you know, he's done such terrific work with this group over the years, and, and it's, an, it's an incredible cause. And he's really shined a light on a disease that a lot of people don't really know about. And so to be going this long, 30 years, is a pretty amazing feat. I've met a lot of people with scleroderma over the years, and because of what happened to my sister, it really made it my passion to try to do whatever I could to help people that aren't getting help. And there's really a lot of bad medicine and a lot of rheumatologists that don't know what they're doing and they just medicate people. They just give the guinea pig people. And so this is like, a, our research money is really working yeah, and there are people in, in remission and, and that's amazing. We have a doctor speaking tonight, Dr. Fred Wigley from Johns Hopkins and he has a scleroderma center that I've gone to. I, I used to, I've made a couple videos over the years that are on our website which is uh, srfcure.org and Dr. Fred Wigley is going to speak and he is um, one of my heroes. Um, I mean, I met all of his patients. He is, does it because he knows that we can cure this thing. I mean, in our lifetime, I don't, I don't know, I'm a comedian, right? But uh, these people are really putting people in remission, and I've met them. And I've also met people that I haven't met. They passed away a year later. We did a benefit in New York last year, and a young lady, 19-year-old girl, spoke at it, and then she passed away because it, it hits lungs on some people. And so we're going to do one in New York November 8th also. But this one we haven't done for a couple years. This is a very important night for a lot of people. You know, SRF has been uh, something that Bob has been involved in, that we've all been involved in through supporting his, his uh, you know, chairing these events and raising so much money. And, you know, I also was touched by scleroderma. My grandmother suffered from it. Um, she suffered from a, a scleroderma that affects the skin, and it was incredibly painful to watch, and she lost her ability to write and to, you know, hold forks and spoons and feed herself and do all those sorts of things. Um, so for me, it's also a really personal cause, and it's something that I don't think a lot of people know about, that there's not a lot of attention brought to it, um, but it's something that's affecting millions and millions of people, and, and, and a lot, primarily women. And, um, you know, I, I, I'm so proud of Bob for all the hard work that he's put in. It's just, it's really wonderful to see somebody that I love so much bring so much attention and love and, um, you know, perseverance to a cause that really means a lot. Robin Williams did the first one, and then over a 30-year period, he did it seven times. So this is a guy that couldn't say no, and his heart was so beautiful. And he would just show up in New York at our event, or here, or we've done San Francisco, and we've done Vegas. And uh, Robin went, what do you need, Chief? What do you need? I said, we need to raise money. And uh, it was uh, 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 most of the greatest comedians that have ever done comedy have been at this event. Rodney Dangerfield was a friend. He was here. Um, Many, many, many friends, many wonderful people, Seinfeld, and, I mean, it just goes on and on. That's what sets the Scleroderma Research Foundation apart from every other foundation that's trying to help anything. We are strictly research, so we, the money that we make um, after we pay for the room goes right into research, and we fund the leading centers of excellence in the country, uh, Johns Hopkins, Stanford, UCSF. Duke, different places that we have uh, put our money that will give those scientists that aha moment. Sadly, on January 9th, 2022, Bob Saget was found unresponsive in his room by hotel staff at around 4 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. He had missed his scheduled checkout time, and family members had grown concerned after being unable to contact him. Saget was staying at the Ritz-Carlton Orlando Grand Lakes, he was in the midst of a stand-up tour and had performed in Ponte Vedra Beach, Florida, the previous evening. 
emergency responders pronounced him dead at the scene. He was 65. No cause of death was immediately announced, but foul play and drug use were ruled out by police and the medical examiner. News of Bob Saget's death broke during a broadcast of America's Funniest Home Videos in the Eastern and Central Time Zones, and ABC interrupted the program to announce it. Several of his Full House co-stars released statements of tribute after his death. John Stamos said that he was broken and gutted. Candace Cameron Bure called him one of the best human beings. Mary-Kate and Ashley Olsen said that Bob was the most loving, compassionate, and generous man and are deeply saddened by his death. Lori Laughlin said, words cannot begin to express how devastated I am. Bob was more than my friend. He was my family. I will miss his kind heart and quick wit. Thank you for a lifetime of wonderful memories and laughter. I love you, Bobby. Bob Saget was one of America's most famous comedians with a legacy that will last for decades to come. He cemented his place in the Hall of Fame of pop culture father figures with various roles loved by fans. More than any other role though, he'll be remembered as the tender-hearted father figure of the 90s from Full House and in a four decade long career. It's safe to say that Bob Saget will continue to have an impact on future generations. His comedy becoming timeless. <laughs>